Hi. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, of course. Thank you for joining my office hours. Um, do you want to uh, just quickly introduce yourself and the topic, and then we can begin the discussion? Sure. Hi, I'm Christy. I, I'm a community member. I have two kids in Palo Alto. Um, they were both at Pali. One one just graduated, and one is a uh, um, rising sophomore. Um, he's actually on the science team, the TSA teams. Your your daughter is on that, right? Yeah, yeah. So, science Olympiad, right? Oh, uh, so he's not Science Olympiad. He's the TSA teams. Oh, okay. Very do you cool. do that one too or no? We were just in Orlando with that. That's the um, one. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Um, oh. And Balva used to do those. I don't know. You knew her. But, um, and then I'm in graduate school now uh, getting a master's in social work. And I'm just interested in creating more affordable housing in Palo Alto. So I wanted to meet with you to talk with you about that. And um, and learn more about, I mean, I, I looked and I saw that you've supported a lot of affordable housing mm -hmm. initiatives like Wilton Court and um, changing some of the zoning um, to allow for more um, residential units. But I wanted to get your thoughts in general on like why you think this is hard to create in Palo Alto and why you think we're not making more progress on it more quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I think... Um... I think the fundamental reason is that uh, I think there are some in the city who really don't want housing, right? And, and they call themselves residentialists. And um, I think the reasons why they don't are because of or concerns around traffic, concerns around parking. Um, and, um, and the way it kind of manifests itself is kind of, it's, it's not just one thing, but it's it's a series of things, right? So one of them is, um, like a few years ago, we quadrupled our impact fees. So typically when you build something, you have to pay an extra fee to mitigate any impacts it has. Um, and sometimes some of these are so, the impact fees are so large that it makes um, projects in infeasible. So people just will not build anymore. Okay. So an example of this is a um, long time ago, there was a uh, retailer on El Camino called Mike's Bike. So that that building was a, was a bike shop. Yeah, they I know build, that. Yeah, they were going to build housing there, but it took so long to get approval to get their entitlements. And then the impact fees went up so much that they decided that they're not going to build anymore. It just didn't make sense. Um, so that's an example where, you know, um, you know, if you if you make it so expensive to build, they just wouldn't build. The other thing is um is make making it very difficult to go through the building um process. So whether there's the entitlements, right? That means getting permission to actually submit building um uh construction drawings to um, actually getting your building inspected. The process is incredibly long, incredibly hard. And we benchmarked this. Um, uh, in fact, we, we wrote a, um, and Cole, you could, you could send it to her later, but we wrote, wrote kind of like a, a analysis of this. And um, it is, um, you know, we're, we're probably one of the worst in, in, at least in the area that we, at least for the places we were able to check in terms of how long it takes to get inspections, um, how elaborate and hard the process is. So that also adds cost to construction, right? Whether it's construction loans or, or um, you know, extra contract fees. So, so that's one side. The other part of it that makes it really tough is, um, and and it, it's kind of a very, um, very, um, uh, kind of con counterintuitive, uh, um, you know, thought, which is um, uh, trying to increase the affordability. The part that has to be affordable. So, um, so um, you know, there are some people um, on council who insist that projects be one hundred percent affordable, and um, it sounds like a good idea. Like, well, hey, let's make everything affordable. But until come down to of come come down to the fact of well, who's going to build it then, right? So, um, so it's it's a great idea to have things affordable, but um, fundamentally, the land costs something, the contractor's building costs something, right? The bank loaning the money money charge interest so that costs something so so basically when you're saying that you want 100 percent affordable that means somebody has to lose money right that means the developer right. the contractor the and and so what happens when you insist on projects being 100 percent affordable is that they simply just don't get built because you're basically insisting that a developer has to take a lot of risk and then lose money on the project and simply in our market economy that's just not going to happen so um, so that also prevents housing from being built is insistent on affordable, like 
um, you know, there's, there's extremes of extreme, um, extreme, um, extremes of this, like 100% affordable. That that basically is like it's like the the death nail, right? On any any project, so you make it 100% affordable, you're you're basically gonna lose money, and unless you're just you know a uh, billionaire or something like that, you're you're just you're just not gonna do it. Um, but even even like projects that that are like um, pushing like let's say ten percent affordable or some 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 smaller percentage affordable, that also I mean the the, the crux of the issue is that um, you know unlike the federal government, uh, Palo Alto cannot print money, right? We cannot print money, so so it's having mandates that oh you're making hundred percent affordable just means that less gets built. That's that's the crux of the issue. And if less gets built, that means that the rents, the cost of housing is is higher, right? Because it's um, like basically, right. There's basically less yeah, yeah, supply and demand, right? Economics, right? So it's uh, unless you have a you know dictatorial government where you have some sort of price caps, which people have also pushed for, like rent control, right? So they say, well, we're going to have rent control, and we're going to make make it so that people cannot charge more than a certain amount. And what that also means is that people are just not going to build anymore, right? And that's also what happens. So I mean, really, the way to get more affordable housing really is to is to build, but um, but because of the drivers and the mechanisms that people do to prevent it, you know, so just 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 to give you a point of reference, so Palo Alto, uh, Mountain View, East Palo Alto, Miller Park, we all kind of formed this uh, group to have a sewer plant that's shared among all the cities in the area, and Palo Alto at the, at one point in time was the largest city, right? We were the largest city. Compared to everyone else, Mountain View, Miller Park, East Palo Alto, and so we had to pay the largest share of the cost of the infrastructure. Um, and what has happened is over the years, right? Mountain View has blown past us, right? The Mountain View is much larger than us now. Like almost like all the cities have grown around us. All the cities have more people, except for Palo Alto. So Palo Alto, we're roughly the same size we were. You know, we've been at almost the same size for decades, right? Right. Um, and and so all the other cities have grown in size, except for Palo Alto. And what that means is that um, because of the way this the sewer contract was was set up, Palo Alto still pays the same percentage, even though we have less people percentage wise compared to everyone else. But that's, that's an error with how you set up the contract, right? Oh, it's it's totally messed up, right? Yeah. So so basically, you know, we were paying artificially higher sewer rates um, because of the fact that you know, had we grown like everyone else, um, then then. Um, it would make sense. Yeah, it would have been okay. But, yeah. but basically, we we've been frozen in time, and everyone else has grown, and so now we're paying a outside share. And so I, every chance I get, I complain about why we shouldn't be having. You know, we should renegotiate this contract because it's totally messed up. Um, but the other thing is, um, is uh, um, this is like seven eight years ago now, but um, but. Um, the people who are anti-housing here um, pushed to give away Palo Alto's water. So we had we have what's something called water rights. That means we we are we are we are um, we are uh, we are uh, we get to get a certain amount of water, um, and basically uh, we give it away. Um, and they do. East Palo Alto, East oh. Palo Alto, and Mountain View sold theirs. They they actually leased it out to East Palo Alto. Uh, I, I forgot the exact amount, but I think it's like $10 million or something. And they'll get it back because it's only leased out. Palo Alto, we gave ours away. And part of the reason why this wasn't said, right? But this is largely, I think, the reason why it was given away was so that uh, because if we give away, give away our water rights, it means that we can't do a certain amount of development now. So there's basically a cap on how much development oh. we can do. And so it's, it's, so like this whole thing about like, like, um, like uh, giving away our water rights, quadrupling the impact fees, Slowing down the building permitting process and then time of process, um, you know, pushing for one hundred percent affordable are all these things that uh, make it crazy impossible to build anything in our city, right? Mm -hmm. And and that and that's why we simply don't build. Like we, you know, construction people you know tear down old buildings and build new buildings, but in terms of net population growth, we don't really have it in our city, and it's really because of all these anti housing measures that's that's happened. It's not just one of them, but all of them put together make it pretty much impossible to build anything in our city. And um, and so um, so if you wonder why we don't have affordable housing, it's because we just don't build any housing. Because don't, that means the only way that, I mean, there's maybe a few people who are lucky and they get rent control or they get, you know, these uh, affordable, like these affordable full market rate units. But 
Um, but the new people are screwed, right? The young professionals are screwed. The young families are screwed. They, they simply can't move here anymore. And so what's happened over the, over the past few decades is that Palo is getting older and older and older. Um, and it's because like- Demographically, uh, you mean? Demographically, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, demographically, right? And to me, it's it's kind of sad because I, I want a vibrant city. I want a city that yeah, you know, that creates the next Google, the next Facebook, right? I want I want that's the kind of city I want to be in. But um, definitely, you know, most like a lot of people are, are out there don't agree with me, right? They they um, you know, uh, I I think they they don't want new people in our city. But I I think you're saying the popul just the general population, like the general. Well, I I think I mean if you look at I think the majority of council doesn't want to finish, right? Because yeah. so like a lot of the things I, I push for are not, I'm, I'm in a minority most of the time. And, um, and it's because, um, because like, you know, I, I, when, when Palo Alto gave away its water, it was, uh, there were nine people on council at the time. It was eight, one vote, right? I was the only one to vote against it. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, um, it's unfortunate, right? But I, I actually think by making Palo Alto, by free by basically freezing our population, we are changing Palo Alto because Palo Alto used to be the city of entrepreneurs, the city that right, right, right. We're not and, that anymore. Yeah. No, we we become a retirement community. We become become a a, a gentrified community where only the really rich can people can, can live here, and the people you know who are young and starting out as young professionals can't live here, and the, the people that you know would have done the amazing new tech startup aren't here anymore right they're in other places and i think it's sad and so so it's really ironic by 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 by, by basically pulling up the drawbridge um it is uh it is uh changing palo alto we're becoming a retirement community frankly. yeah well, what about the money that's set aside for um the 52 million dollar pledge to affordable housing fund like can't that be used to well yeah, the, the water rights or you know do the things that you're talking about well, I mean, you give away the water rights. I mean, that, I mean, you put a permanent cap on how much should be built in Palo Alto. They can't get that back. Cannot get it back. Ever. I don't it's understand gone. that. You can never we, renegotiate. We gave we gave something that was worth probably hundreds of millions of dollars away for free, and we're never going to get it back. And that means that, and it, it basically put it, it permanently caps how much development can happen Bro. in the city well, forever. Why can't we change the negotiation? You can't... Oh, we gave it away already. It's, it's, it's we don't have it anymore. Oh, so we'd have to get them to give it back and they're never going to give it back is what you're saying. Oh, we would have to buy it back. That's insane. I, I thought so. I thought so, right? <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But, but, it, but, but so there's, a, there's an incredible number of these anti-housing policies that get put in place, which I think um, they all sound good. Like, oh yeah, we're going to help East Palo Alto, Palo Alto, Palo Alto out by giving the water rights right away. But what that really what they're really saying is no, we want to prevent yeah. development from happening in our city. And yeah. people say, oh, we want these projects to be 100 percent affordable, which sounds good. But really, what they're saying I is, understand what you're saying. I want yeah, no one to, I want no one to build stuff anymore, yeah. right? Um, or yeah. they say, oh, we're going to do rent control. We're going to make it so that everyone loses money <laughs> when they rent the stuff out. So no one's going to build anymore, right? So, so what that means is that's why there's no affordable housing in Palo Alto, right? Mm -hmm. Or any available affordable housing is because. Nobody's nobody unless no, I get I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. But what but what happens then with this fund, this fifty two million dollars? Well, I mean, I think the issue is, um, I don't know if you know this, but the city's like losing twenty plus million dollars this year, right? You know, we have a, we're spending more money than we ever spent, and we're losing money, and we're gonna lose money. We last lost money last year. We're gonna lose money next year, and the next, you know, three years or so. We're basically gonna drain our reserves. Um, so um, you know, the that affordable housing fund is is funded by development, right? So, but if you're not building, if people aren't building because the impact fees are just too outrageously high, who, how does that affordable housing fund get replenished? It, it simply doesn't, right? Because no one's building, right? That's like, I mean, they're, re, they're rebuilding their house, but there's no new impact. It's, impact fees happen when you add new net new square footage, but that's just simply not happening anymore. I see. And so, and so, so and then and when we do build, something affordable like we did Buena Vista right or you did um this home key project right um the problem with those is that it it's like a trivial number of units we're talking about like you know right I, well that tens, I'm aware tens, I, yeah it's like it's like it's like tens of units it, 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 it it's a rounding error like it's almost negligible right it makes us feel good like oh we built this affordable housing shelter which by the way the same affordable housing shelter built in Mountain View was like 
half the price when you sell. So that's another issue. Is like, like now if you you know build you know next to Costco, their you know home key project, right? Which I, I initially supported the home key project, but when it doubled in cost, I'm like, no, it, it doesn't make sense, right? Because I mean, we don't have to have a gold plated homeless shelter. We, what we need is something to something that's affordable to get people on their feet. And I, I personally believe that, um, like I, I grew up very, very poor. Um, not that I'm rich now, but I'm not destitute like I was. And I, my my belief is that America is a land of opportunity where people may start out poor, but not, they're not going to be permanently poor. And I think some of the policies are also with this mindset that when someone's permanently poor, someone's going to be poor for all their life. And I think that's wrong. And that's that's also why I'm very against ownership BMR or low market rate, because I think what should happen is we should lift people from where they are so they don't need this anymore. And then it can be recirculated to someone else. So more people get help, right? right. But, but we have this concept of ownership BMR, which to me is so anti-American. I, I I hope we're not that that's the country we are, where people are permanently in poverty. That that makes no sense to me. And I that's right. not, I, I don't think we should plan for it. So I whenever whenever these projects come out with ownership being more, I'm just totally against it because I, I I I want I want these affordable units to circulate to people that really need it because I I know right. one of my friends um his family was very poor when they came here they're they're, they're based in San Francisco and they mm -hmm. got this affordable housing unit and basically it's uh, it's like a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars it's like so dirt cheap it's ridiculous and they never want to get their family's actually done very well now over the past three four decades they've done very very well right. But they never want to give this affordable, this their this, unit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's and, and like so, every home in Palo Alto. I mean, but, that's but it's like terrible. It's, it's like, terrible because yeah. they don't need it anymore. They drive oh, like yeah. BMWs and Mercedes. They're, they're very wealthy now. Yeah. yeah. It's they like don't get out of the up. subsidized housing. They, yeah. they basically, they basically get vacant. Okay. They use it as a crash pad. And it's like, it's terrible, right? Like, what about the people that really need it? So I, I, yeah. I for one, don't support the idea of ownership BMR because, um, yeah, and, and then that's the other thing is I, I think, you know, what we really should do is encourage development because that's going to drive down the prices. That's going to make things more affordable. Now, the flip side is that some people out there um, don't want building because, not just because of traffic parking, but because they, there's a fallacy, I think, that people believe that by building, their housing price is going to fall. And I actually believe it's just the opposite. I think that, um, um, like, like, when I moved to my place in Palo Alto, um, you know, I, I rebuilt my house and whatnot. And so I had probably one of the most expensive houses on my block. And now there's a bunch of people who built, you know, redone their house. And, they, and now mine's not the nicest one. Right. 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 And it's better. Actually, I, I want, I want, actually, I hope my neighbors knock down their shack and, and build something nice because it actually helps my property value. And that's the other fallacy I think people have is that they think that, that building actually depresses their housing values. And I actually think it's just the opposite. I actually think that building actually helps like helps your housing value because if you live in a nicer neighborhood, it's going to be worth more. And so anyways, but I've been railing about this for, for, you know, for some time, but you know, I'm certainly not in the majority on council on this. That's interesting. I really appreciate your time. It's really been helpful to hear and see how you think about it. And um, I didn't understand about the water. I mean, and then it's crazy. It's, 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 it's actually craziness. So like basically anything you could think of, that would prevent development pretty much has been done. It's like almost anything you could think of. That people very would... insidiously, like quietly. Oh, yeah. and then it's always, it's nobody's always... seeing like out and out, like we're against development, right? Oh, ever, ever since they want affordable housing, but, 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 you know, it's basically, it's like, it's like, um, you can imagine that there's a path to affordable housing and, and then these people are throwing boulders in the room yeah. in front of this, right? So to basically make it crazy impossible, right? And, and this is also why, you know, in Palo Alto, like they're thinking about shutting down elementary schools right now because basically the young families, the, the, the young professionals that would have moved here, the young families that would have moved right. here can't do that anymore. And so there's, there's fewer, fewer elementary school kids now, right? So we're, we're basically like, you know, they're going to, the school board's talking about shutting schools down, right? Because, because there aren't little kids anymore, right? Well, that's crazy. I mean, I live that because you would think that having uh, fewer people would lead to, smaller classrooms and more learning and it's the opposite it's like they've just increased the class sizes and it's like because they don't want to put any restriction it's just that, yeah. i don't follow the school board quite as much but i just know the demographic stuff and yeah you know, but but it, it's just I, I i just feel like this is actually changing palo alto because palo alto was always a city of opportunity where yeah. 
people with very little would you know do something and create something amazing and and then now it's it's not become that it's not become it's become like you have to be kind of ritzy to to move here right right and and it's just um anyways i i get a lot of flack over my my stance on stuff but you know well i appreciate your talking with me and taking the time so thank you so much that was really just actually so you're doing your grad so you're doing a phd no i'm getting a master's in social work Can okay are you are you doing a thesis or something uh i'm i am i'm writing a paper about it but... oh, okay what, what's the paper on uh, it's for a public policy class, and it's about just like change in your local area. So, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, you know, um, if it's interesting, I'd love to read it, and we could also um, link it to this video and whatnot. But um, yeah, I, I'm glad you're um, you're uh, uh, you know looking at this kind of stuff. I think it's important. It is important, and it's sad to me. I am a community member here, and I don't think it's the same as. I mean, when I, when my kids were going through, my older son went through Juvenic, he just graduated, but there were four kindergarten classes. And now I think there's two there. I mean, it's really shrunk yeah. so dramatically and it's really, um, it's just crazy. So. Yeah, it's, it's a reflection of, um, of how unaffordable Polito has become, right? And but birth rates are down as well, right? Birth or rates are down too. Yeah. So it's a double whammy, right? It's yeah. a double whammy of, well, there's like, so I was at a, um, uh event for elected leaders and um i was talking to someone from orange county in orange county that's you know you know they're booming it's like <laughs> it's like oh they're growing they're, so they're, much yeah, yeah. So, so so they have the opposite problem with their it's booming in orange county right now and so um maybe birth rates overall are down but i think i think the major um the major uh drive of lower enrollment is housing costs just yeah, incredible. for sure. But South Palo Alto is doing better than North Palo Alto, right? That's my understanding. Probably, I, I don't know. Maybe. I, I think I, that that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not a school board, so I don't follow it so closely. I used to be on the pie board and I'm, uh -huh. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure that South Palo Alto is growing as well as there's more, it's more affordable, right? And well, that, like, that, that would make sense because there's actually been more housing built in South, South Palo Alto versus North Palo Alto. So in North Palo Alto, there's not much of anything. Yeah. So you're saying they're doing these initiatives, but they can't really make a dent because there's so many ways that people are getting in the way of development and making it just so difficult. to. Yeah. And then, you know, like um, the way we're trying to do um, affordable housing, which is it's kind of, in my, in my opinion, insane, is we're trying to just pay for it with city money. Right. Um, but, you know, because we have relatively low development, so our, our impact, uh, our housing impact fund is really small. It's not like we have lots of cash. And you know we're like like the um, the home key project that we're building. These are homeless shelters, right? I think it's it's close to a million dollars per unit, right? We're talking like a one or one bedroom or two. It's like not not big units; they're tiny units. Like they're like mobile, not mobile homes. What do you call them? Pre built, pre prefab homes, right? Okay. They're like prefab homes for like a million dollars, right? Which is almost double the price of what Navi is paying, right? So almost the same exact thing. Wow. And so and so like you know. Even if you have fifty million dollars in housing fund, that's only fifty units. So that's right. like that's like a round. Yeah, and we're spending too much on the wrong things. And, yeah. Well, the, no, the problem is that the problem is that we can't. The city, unless we get some enormous revenue source, we can't build this stuff ourselves. We, the only way this stuff could be built is if we encourage the public, the the private market to do this, right? Right. Or, because because well, this, with public funds, there's simply not enough. To how do would it. you do that? How with tax breaks? Well. Don't quadruple the impact fees. You know, don't give away our water rights. Don't insist on. Don't insist that 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 you know the units have to be hundred percent affordable. Don't insist on ownership BMR. Um, don't you know make someone go through three four years of entitlement, right? I mean, all that kind of stuff prevents housing from being from being built. Right. That's really yeah. awful. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Uh, great chat with you. Nice to chat with you too. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.